morning, page 50 in your hymnals. Page 50, there is power in the blood. Let's all stand. Page 50. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. singing how many of you don't have a best how many of you just make noise yo yeah joyful noise that sounds spiritual glad you're here happy memorial day right mary or is it mary memorial day happy, happy okay we're good you navy guys yeah Two weeks. They could only take me two weeks and got rid of me. No comment. <laughs> we need to pray. Virginia, our cousin who had surgery, is in the nursing home recuperating, but she is going stir crazy. Is she watching? Maybe? No? Okay. Hi, beautiful. <laughs> she hates when I do that. She asked me not to do that. See how obedient I am? How's, how's Ken doing, Lucy? He's home? Are you taking care of him like a good mother should? <laughs> Ivan is in excruciating pain, back pain. John is doing better. Ivan is not doing, he needs, he needs prayer. So Virginia Myers, Ivan Pennington, should we pray for Ken? Pray for Ken. Shelly Paling is having a shot, a brain shot. No, a needle shot. Is it cortisone? Is it to help the pain? She's also having back pain. And if you've had back pain... Some of you have neck pain. Yeah. yeah, you're so slow. It's going to be summer today, wonderful weather, and I'll be your pain in the neck. Pray, others are, I, I just, can I throw this out? I want to say something about Steve and Amy. You think that's okay? Stephen redid his roof. And uh, Allison's boss happened to be in town, and he does restoration. And he said, hey, are you sure nothing leaked in the walls? You might have mold or moisture in the walls. Well, sure enough. Their bedroom, their bathroom, laundry, big bathroom, kitchen full of mold. 
So before Stephen said, it was almost like when he said that, he's watching them rip out, move everything, and they ripped everything out. They're taking care of it. Insurance is paying for it. But that family's living in the living room. Everything's in the dining room. That's all they got. They're living in the living room. I told them to come live in the parsonage. So they decided to go to Tennessee instead. So they went out of town. They had a plan for spring break, but they went. But just pray that all that. Some of you have been in that situation when, I mean, it's all covered. Insurance is going to take care of everything. It's going to be probably nicer, you know, but it's still the upheaval. So just pray they have a great time. Pray that that all goes well. It, I, don't, I don't know if they'll get done this week, but man, they've been working on it, had all the machines in there, sucking the juice out of the walls, whatever they do. We've been through that, you know, when it floods, it rains, and all. It just, it's been a disruption. But that, I mean, everything's, some stuff they had to get rid of, and everything, I mean, it's just bare, everything's gone down to the wood, and so they're going to redo, dry out. Just, just pray about it. He, he's, he's his mom. You know, I'm going, <laughs> I can't believe it. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I would be going nuts, but he's got his mom. Because if I was a cop and you were speeding, I'd put a bullet in your knee. <laughs> Boom, that'll teach you, slow down. So we need cops that go, well. One lady told him one time, he said, you know, you're speeding. And he says to her, and, you know, he looks intimidating. And she goes, officer, I have new boots. <laughs> and he said, what was that? She said, a new boots, I couldn't feel the gas pedal. So you need to take your boots off. And go the speed limit. And he let her go. Not me. <laughs> I would have made her push the car home. Just, I, laugh a little. Some of you don't laugh usually, so I want you to have a, a chuckle when you come here. Glad you're here. Hey, Paul Pendle, we go back. His dad was, not was. Is, how's your dad doing? Good? John Pendle. It's a Pendle. John Pendle, when I surrendered to preach, John Pendle said, you're coming to our house and you're going to speak to the adult Sunday school group. And I said, no. <laughs> we talk, I talked to Roger about this yesterday. Before all this happened in my life, I was very, very, I know you don't believe it, <coughs> introverted. John Pendle, dear, dear, dear. And, of course, Paul and his brother and sister were always around and just wonderful memories. I lost my best friend this week. The guy I talked about, his mom called the cops on us. He, he uh, remember, he had heart problems, and I witnessed to him. I didn't even know it, but he died this week. Bob Urbanski. Yeah. And... Uh, he lived by you guys, yeah. St. Joe. Yeah. And, man, I was just, it's just, wow. I'm just hoping that maybe he thought about something I said because he was not open to it. And then when he got, he saw Amy a couple times and said, tell Vito to pray for me. So I got to talk to him. I don't know. I don't know. But, hey, listen, life can end. I'm not saying all that to ask Paul to pray, but somehow I connected death with Paul Pendle. <laughs> not really. Paul, will you open us in prayer, please? Father, we thank you that you're God, mm -hmm. that nothing surprises you. Mm -hmm. And Lord, as we come, we've come to worship you. Mm -hmm. And Lord, some have caused us to fear. Yeah. And you said when our hearts are overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Lord, help us to look up yeah. and see Jesus. Yeah. And Lord, help us to, to turn our hearts toward your throne this morning. Mm -hmm. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. you may be seated.
page six in your hymnals, Canaan Land is just in sight. Page six. Moses led God's children thirty years he led them through the cold and through the night. Oh, they said, let's burn that Moses said, keep going. Canaan land is just inside. There will be no sorrow there in the tomorrow. We will be there by and by. Milk and honey for you there is where I'm going. Canaan land is just inside. Though we walk through valley, though we climb high mountains, we must not be. Some songs are just fun, aren't they? That song is just fun. We, did you get a bulletin? You weren't supposed to touch it. You're supposed to grab it with your lips. Just get, man, you all must be a blast to live with. If you see it, we're going to be here. And we can't forget, we, I forget how many people are watching. So we welcome you if you're watching. And uh, wish you were here if you could be here. We get notes and cards from all over people that, that live far away that are watching. How encouraging. So we never intended that to be, but it happened. And maybe this happened for I don't know. God has all kinds of purposes. So everything's very simple. If you have a bulletin, it's telling you that we welcome you if you're a visitor. Today, we're doing our service, of course, now. We had Sunday school tonight. We'll be here. And there is in... Uh, lieu of Memorial Day, only two defining forces on the bottom of your bulletin, if you have it, only two defining forces have ever offered to die for you. Jesus Christ and the American soldier. Amen. One died for your soul, the other died for your freedom. Amen. That's good, isn't it? Wish I would have come up with that. Wednesday we'll be here, prayer meeting and youth group, and then basically because we can't schedule anything yet, we're waiting and we're going to, but we have put the birthdays on there and the anniversaries. Are you going to sing? Can you sing to Chris and yes. what's her name? Amy, can you sing? Should we have them stand? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Happy birthday to Chris and to Amy. Happy birthday. John's terrible, isn't he? Man, make him stand. That's bad. That's bad. Scott Brown, you're still scheduled for surgery on the 5th. Pray for Scott, June the 5th. He is having, uh, he's getting a new heart. Oh, pray for him. Pray for him. That'll be outpatient. But you just pray that everything goes well. There is a new draft of the directory. The directory is the most unstable thing on the planet. People leave, people come, people change. There is a draft on the back table. If the information is correct, Leave it. 
There's a red pen, Amy. There's a red pen back there. If something need, if you don't want to be in there, cross yourself off. If you want to add a phone, an email, that's up to you. We'll make it. And we keep trying to, Lucy knows this, every time she would update it, it was outdated because things change so often. So we would like you to see that if you'd like to be in there. We don't mind. If you don't want to be in there, that's fine. If there's a landline, how many of you have still have in this room, you still have a landline? You're old-fashioned. <laughs> how many of you don't have a cell phone? Correct the directory. We want to make sure we can get a hold of you. Beg you for money. Not really. I pray the Lord will. Our president got on whoever carried him, and he said church is essential. Amen. And he's encouraging governors. I don't get it. I just need to do what I got to do. But you pray. Pray for a country that's still tumultuous. It's still people are scared, afraid, mask everywhere. Pray that God in this time will strengthen our faith in him. That he'll be glorified, that we'll lean on him, that we'll draw near to him, and that leaders will have wisdom. In Illinois, it is against the law to have church. He doesn't want to have church for another year. And they're saying things like, I mean, it's just crazy. So I don't know what's happened, but it's happened. So pray. Thank God. Thank God that we can meet. And I'm so glad to see you. And yet there are some that are still struggling. And that, that's understandable. There's things I struggle with that you don't understand, right? Like being a I'm, I'm a fraidy cat of the dark. It's not dark in our house. Never has been. When the lights go off, I've got 12 flashlights right next to me. Don't I, Amy? She's probably thinking 15. <laughs> and it's just never, I, I'm, I don't like the dark. And some of you go, oh, man up. Some of you women, man up. We all have our quirks, don't we? And so we miss you if you're not here and can be here. If you can't be here and you're watching, we're just so thrilled that that is available to you. We want to do the best. So sometimes I forget, when y'all weren't here, I, it was all camera. Now that most of you are here, it's, I forget about the camera. So we don't want to ignore you. I just don't know where to look. So I'm just looking at all of them, and once in a while you catch me. But if you're here, I'd look at you. If you're on camera, don't expect me to look at you, because I don't know where to look. Ushers, will you come please? If you would, we're going to do this procedure for a little while. If you use a hymnal, when you're done with it, would you leave it on the pew so we know that it needs to be disinfected? Would you just, you have to do it now if you remember which one. That would be a great help that we don't have to keep doing them all. But for the most part, we want you to know that, that after every service, before you come in, everything is clean, wiped down, disinfected. You're welcome to wear a mask. Some of you need a mask. You're welcome to wear. You're welcome to wear. I've got a Trump mask. And I really want to wear it. But I think the Lord would go, what do you mean why did I let somebody kill you? You can't wear a Trump mask in public, so that's why I'm not going to wear it. But I, they said a mask. so. I'm. <laughs> do I look like Trump? You do. <laughs> Quit it. This is church.
pray with me. Father, thank you for our guests today. Thank you for our people that have been here and love you. And Lord, we just want you to get glory. And we're going to laugh, Lord. We need to. You said a merry heart. You said it. Merry heart, do good like a medicine. You didn't say when to have it. Paul said, I'm in jail and I'm rejoicing. So God, we believe it's okay. So help us, Lord, to rejoice and help us to be obedient to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. in your hymnals. Fill my cup, Lord. Page seven. Let's all stand, shall we? Let's sing the first and last verses.
Thanks, kids. That was good. Luke 22, if you have a Bible, if you don't, we read it so you can listen to it. If you're at home, it's on the screen for you. Here we don't do that. That's too distracting. We just figure, get a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we have them available for $99.95. Luke 22, Luke 22. We sure aren't in heaven, are we? Or aren't we? This place is a mess. Everybody's masked up. Like, what? They're talking, what? They can't even agree if they work. Wear them anyways. And then they say, people are passing out from them. And there's some disease that if you breathe your own... I, you can't win, man. We'd be better off getting the virus. All this, you know, six feet, can't talk. Pat said you can't sing. Because water droplets come out of your... Mouth. I call this how to keep the rooster quiet. How to keep the rooster quiet. Ringing any bells. Last time I preached this, Scott had and we played that. But I do so much better than a real rooster. You know, you're big boys and girls, you know what a rooster sounds like. Luke 22, the famous story. I think it's famous. Peter told the Lord, I don't get this. You saying we're all going to leave you. They're going to grab you, crucify you. Maybe, he said, maybe everybody else will leave. I won't. Remember, you count on me. You've said something like that, haven't you? And then failed. Peter was so confident Jesus said, is that right? Jesus looked him in the eye and said, so you won't deny me. Peter said, I will die with you. Didn't he say that? I will die with you. Well, that's the kind of guy you want on your side, don't you? If he means it. But then when everything went down, where's Peter? Sitting with all the crucifiers. Warming himself. Bible, Bible calls it Peter followed afar off. Where's the guy that was saying, I'm there for you, Lord. Will they come and get you? I'll die too. Where's that guy? So, Jesus tells him what's going to happen. By the way, Jesus knows what's going to happen. When Jesus tells you what's going to happen, don't say, no, because you don't know. But Jesus knows. So when you read this word, and he, see, I live by promises. I don't live by feeling. I live by what the Bible says. Bible says this, that's how. I don't live by, you know, what I think. You know what? I'm pretty sure God doesn't care what I think. He cares if I follow His promise. 
So Peter said, you know what I think? Jesus said, no, I know. Here, here's, here's what's going to happen. Can you read Peter's mind as Jesus is telling him, you're going to deny me? Can you, can you read Peter's mind? I mean, at least he was convinced he wouldn't. He was wrong. When Jesus said something, Peter should have said, I'm all ears. Because I know you know. Remember, Jesus is not just some guy that was born. He was God that had been forever and ever. And when Jesus was born, it was God. However you want to look at this, it was God being born. And I know that's hard for you and I to comprehend. It's hard for you and I to think of it. We think of babies, a baby. Babies are nice. I mean, usually. Until. He wasn't a baby. He was God. He made everything. He just chose to come into the world that way to take care of our biggest problem, which was die for our sin. So listen to me. When E.F. Hutton talks, I don't, I don't listen. Remember that commercial? When Jesus talks, I listen. I mean, I should. I don't always, but I should. Jesus said, here's what's going to happen. Can you read Peter's attitude? Don't you hate it when you're trying to tell somebody something, you're trying to help them, and they got this attitude like, hurry up. You're done yet. Man, if anybody knows, Jesus knows. Jesus said, here's what's going to happen. Three times, you're going to deny me. And before you deny me that third time, the rooster is going to crow. Shouldn't Peter, hey, shouldn't Peter have fallen to his knees and said, Lord, you show me what to do. I don't want that to happen. Lord, if there's any way that we can keep this from happening, you please help me. Wouldn't you have just grabbed onto the legs of Jesus and said, I'm going to let him go? I mean, I can't deny you if I'm, if I'm hooked onto your legs, so I'm just going to hook onto your legs and stay right here. What did he do? He just went on his way. He was convinced. He had to be. Peter had to be convinced that what Jesus said wasn't going to happen. That horrible. Your mom used to tell you that. My mom used to say, "You're laughing now, but you'll be crying in a little bit." That made absolutely no sense. She was always right. She always. I know where you've been. Well, you don't. She neighbors before Facebook and all that. We had neighbors. I just saw your son. How'd you know it was him? Oh, we couldn't miss him. He did this, he did that. He was throwing rocks. He was doing this. We used to hop in the winter, we'd hop cars. That was the dumbest thing in the world. You had to have boots, we'd buy boots. And then we'd wear off the bottom so they were smooth. And then as cars would go by, we'd grab the bumper and it, trucks were easier. Say, so you could have been killed. You sound just like my mother. <laughs> could I have been killed? Yes. Was I? No. Watch. Watch. Did I think I was going to die? See, that's the problem when we don't listen to Jesus. I got this. I got this. Hey, those words. I know. I know. Just let's. You, you know the story, but there's one verse, verse 61, says, And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter after the cock crew. Verse 60 says, Peter uh, said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. That's the third time. And immediately why he yet spake, the cock crew. 
verse 61, And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice or three times. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I need this. It would be wrong for me to think this is for everybody else and for me. I got this. I don't have this, Lord. There are too many times. I know what your word says. I know your commands. But I act like that's not going to happen to me. So God, help us, show us how to keep the rooster from crowing. How to keep the rooster quiet in our lives. Please speak to each of us. And God, those people that are watching wherever they are, speak to them. Help them to know that you're God and that even through the camera, you can get a hold of them and you can because you're God. Work in our hearts. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you known someone I have, that was a wonderful, strong Christian. Always above board. I've known preachers, man, preachers that just, you, you would be spellbound. And then you hear a story about them, how they have fallen into sin. Where are they? Well, they're not in the ministry. But why not? They did this. They did that. It disqualified them. They got caught doing this or that. And I tend to think that Peter had a strong walk with Jesus. You know the great thing? Even after all of this, Jesus didn't say, Peter, you are, you are just useless. Pentecost, the greatest spiritual event on the earth, the instrument of that event was this Jesus denier. You know what kind of hope that gives you and I? That we can believe Jesus, that he knows us? The devil says, denier, you'll always be a denier. And Peter wasn't. In fact, what history says when they went to crucify Peter, he said, no, no, no. Flip me upside down. I will not die like my Lord. He came a long way from denying the Lord, didn't he? Heroes in my life. Peter, strong walk with God, he gives in to sin. He didn't realize the heartache that sin would cause him. For three years, he, he was intimate with the Lord. He was close. He ate with Him. He listened to Him. He did miracles for Him and watched Him do miracles. For three years. This is the guy that when they came to get Jesus, when Judas betrayed the Lord. Judas said, the one you want, that tells me that Jesus didn't have a glow to him. Because they needed to know which one it was. So Judas said, the one that I kiss. Because they weren't sure who it was. They came, tried to grab Jesus. He's in the garden. Peter rears up, has a sword, takes out his sword. I like him. Man, that's the only way to fly. Huh? Reaction. Reaction. I'm a reactor. They're coming to get Jesus. He kept telling them, here's how, here's how it's going to happen. I'm here, but I'm only here for a short time because they're going to take me, crucify me, and I'm going to rise from the dead, and that's why I came. He probably said, got that? They, we got it. 
And then he tell them again, hey, just want to remind you guys, the whole reason I was born, the whole reason I came was they're going to take me. When you guys see this, it's going to be hard on you. They're going to take me. They're going to, they're going to accuse me falsely. They're going to nail me to a cross. I'm going to rise from the dead. They go, you told us we got it. Sound like you. Oh, I heard you. I heard. We got it. Peter pulls out his sword and starts swinging. I like him. That's me shooting. You know, two, two six guns. You know, like a cowboy. A cowboy never went draw. Just blam! Isn't that great that Peter just took out his sword? Blam! If he cut off a head, that I'd like to see Jesus heal. He could, couldn't he? But he got his ear. You think Peter was going, this is exactly what I was trying to do. Really? Like that'll show you? Let me tell you something. I've done it. My dad's done it. When you cut an ear, it bleeds like mad. I mean, you wouldn't think, well, it's just cartilage. I've done it. I snipped my buddy's earlobe. I know, I know. It's a long story. <laughs> it was an accident. Man. Yet yeah, you would have thought I put a hole in him as big as a basketball. The blood's dripping. He's, you got to hear a little bit of this. Scott, you okay? Blood's air. And he's freaking out, and I'm grabbing towels. My dad's done it with a straight razor. I watched him and I asked my dad, you know, hot lather, and take that straight razor. Been doing it, you know. But boy, that straight razor just slips right into that ear. Can you imagine? Go back now. You hungry? Could you imagine the scene in the garden? Huh? My paper cuts bleed. I can't see it, but I know they're bleeding. Because, man, it hurts. Can you imagine the scene in the garden? I look at that and think, he, come on, he would never deny him. Look at him. Look at how he's defending the Lord. He would never deny the Lord. So one moment he's willing to fight for the Lord and then suddenly he's refusing to admit that he even knows Him. Say, what's wrong with him? Call humanitis. We all do it. Peter's there, but he's not close. In this scenario, as you read this in Luke 22, I'm wondering, could the Lord hear him? The Lord's listening to their false accusations, but can, a, can the Lord hear as a, a gal said, you know what, you look awfully familiar. Say something, he talked, yeah. You're with Jesus. Do you think Jesus kind of went like this? And he heard Peter say, I don't know him. What'd that do to the Lord? They're falsely accusing the Lord. Someone else comes around and says later and said, I know you. I know you. You, that's right. You're with Jesus. See, Jesus, he hears Peter say the second time, I don't know him. Was Jesus about to die? Was he going to die for Peter? Think how we break his heart. Every time we sin, so I don't commit big sins. He didn't die for just big sins. Think of that last time. 
Jesus heard someone say, you know what? We are sure. Look at Jesus. Wouldn't that be terrible to hear? You know why it was terrible? Because Jesus told Peter this is going to happen. What did Peter say? Hey, our kids, I don't know how you spell that. Hey, you guys, this so-and-so, they respond. Like, we are crazy. Then they come back and go, well, you know what? I go, what? You were right. Huh? You were right. Can't hear you. You were right. I'll respond. (laughs) Why do we tell them what we tell them? Because we care. We're not trying to catch them. We're not trying to depress them. Peter, look, Peter could have changed this whole thing, couldn't he? You and I need to just grab the Lord, not let go. Hard to deny him if you're holding on to him. I mean, he said he was going to die. Why wouldn't he be with him? Boy, there's some fear. They've shown us these last two months how fear can control people. Huh? Come on. They have, I'm still washing my hands. I, I don't even need it. I'm at the store the other day. They had big jugs of hand, hands. Up. I bought one. Because I'm just going to sit there. Five minutes. You say, that's, that's crazy. Hey, they scared the, I don't know how you spell bejeebas. They scared the bejeebas out of me. The mass? No. And I can't breathe. Two things. You want to keep the rooster quiet? Number one. Never be too strong. Never be too strong. I got this. I got this. If you always... I had great advice when I was in college. Several pastors said to me, don't ever think it can't happen to you. Anything. Don't ever think you're not capable of of committing that sin or failing. Don't don't ever think it can't happen to you. So that's what I'm saying. Never be too strong. And if you go, if you wish, Matthew 26, I'll give you Peter's words. Jesus said, All ye, verse 31, Matthew 26, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, he quotes Zechariah from the book of Zechariah, the Old Testament minor prophet. He quotes Zechariah 13.7. I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Verse 32, Jesus said, but after I'm risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. So I'll, I'll get through this, I'll die, I'll pay for sin, I'll meet you all in Galilee. Peter answered, verse 33, Matthew 26. Peter answered, this is incredible. Peter said, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never, it says never, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto thee that this night, boy, that was a short, short honeymoon, wasn't it? I'll never be offended. Jesus said, tonight. Do you ever think you're going to make it far doing the right thing and then all of a sudden you fail? Never be too strong. Always grab onto the Lord and know that you need Him. Peter said, I will never be offended. Jesus said, This night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter answered, verse 35, He should have kept his mouth shut. He should have said, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, even if he thought otherwise. But he said, 
though I should die with thee. In other words, if I'm going to die with you, why would I deny you? Lord, you're not making any sense. And it says, likewise also said all the disciples. Peter wasn't sure about the other disciples, but he was sure that he would never deny the Lord. You have to be careful when you think that you're spiritually sufficient. You have to be careful. Does it not say, what a great verse. I've been studying 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 12, 12 says, 1 Corinthians 10, Wherefore, let him that thinketh, he standeth, you know this verse, take heed, lest he fall. Then he says, verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. The God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will also with the temptation make a way to escape. Peter didn't look for the escape. He looked at himself. See, that's when you get into trouble. When you don't look for the escape, you look at, I can do this. Did you ever, did you ever attempt something you knew you could do? Did you ever start working on your house? I'm going to pay anybody that kind of money. I'm going to do this. And then did you call them and go, I tried, it's all messed up. You've done it. You chucklers. When you know you're weak and when you're humble, you'll depend on the Lord. When you're strong, you depend on yourself. Paul said, man, I hate this verse. I'm sorry, I hate it. Here's what it says. Paul said, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10. Paul said, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. I like being weak, he said. I like being sick. Isn't that crazy? But he said, in reproaches when I'm reproached, in necessities when I don't have anything, when I'm persecuted, when I'm distressed for Christ's sake, he said, and he closes that verse, for when I'm weak, you know it, don't you? Then am I strong. Number one, never be too strong. Number two, never be too close to sin. Adam and Eve, did Adam and Eve sin? Well, it's harder if they weren't standing right there, right? Isn't that us? God goes, hey, that tree right there, that's mine, not yours. Don't eat. What do we do? All day. And then the devil comes along and goes, what do you think? He knows we're interested because we're hanging out by it. But in our mind, we're going, I'm not eating. I'm not eating. But you know this, don't you? Can you be too close to the edge? So if, if you're going to fall, chances are you're going to fall off the steps. Here, more likely if you're here, but if you're here, now the chances are better you won't. So the farther you are from the edge, that make, that's logical, right? I'm not talking theology. I'm just talking lology. Just plain old common sense. Hey, there's that verse about putting a fence at the top of the mountain rather than an ambulance at the bottom, wherever that verse is. My dad said it's in there. Peter thought he was saved. Peter said, I'm a disciple. Peter said, I've been walking with the Lord. I've been following the Lord. Peter said, we have risen dead people back to life. 
Peter said, I was there when we took a little food and fed thousands of people. Peter said, this guy was demon-possessed, and we, we cast the demon out. I can handle this standing up for God. Oh, really? He could have if he wasn't too close to it. You know what happens? Once you commit sin, it gets easier the next time. Then you get good at it. Then you learn how to hide it. Once you open the door, the next one comes easier. Four quick thoughts. You say, you just gave us two. I know, I'm giving you four more. Four more quick thoughts. How to keep the rooster quiet in your life. Number one, be weak, be weak, be weak. When you're weak, you need the Lord. Remember what Paul said? I take pleasure in infirmity. We're infirmed, we go, this is, God hates me. God hates me. I'm infirmed. I can't believe God would do this to me. You know why God does that? So that we'll be strong in Him. Didn't Paul say, when I'm weak, He's strong. God knows what He's doing. Why would we question Him? You ever, you ever written a Bible? I mean, I tried. I got as far as Vito said, and I didn't know what else to put. So he's given me a Bible, and I just have to depend on him and realize that I'm getting to heaven because of him. I'm not getting to heaven because of me. It's not by works of righteousness, which I've done, the Bible says, but, but his mercy, he saved me. So I'm weak. When I trusted Christ to be my Savior to get me to heaven, it was all him. It was all me being weak saying, I need you, number two. Know who you are. Peter loved Jesus. Do you think Peter loved Jesus? But he didn't love Jesus as much as he thought he did. I'd never do that. Really? Man, I never, I just, I don't want that to be the, the testimony at the end of my life. Well, I never thought I'd do that. I want to just be faithful to God. I want to be weak. And, and listen to me. I don't want to treat God lightly. When God speaks and God's telling me something, I don't want to make sin little. I don't want to make the price that Christ paid for my sin little. I want to know I'm a sinner saved by His grace. That, that's who I am. I needed Him to get, get into heaven and I need Him to get to heaven. Number three, three words, pray, 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 pray. Learn to pray. Remember when Jesus took Peter with him to pray? Great spiritual warrior, Jesus said, I'm going to go off here and pray. You pray here. Don't you think, you think Peter said, I'm going to nap. You're praying good. I'm going to nap. You know what Peter said? Us too. You're praying, we're praying. Remember that? Read that story. Jesus comes back. He's done praying. What did Jesus say? You couldn't pray one hour. That's not the bad part. You know what the bad part is? He went off to pray again. He woke them up. They said, oh, we must have been in a spiritual trance. We're going to pray, Lord. Are you going to pray? Yeah, I'm going off to pray again. They said, yeah, us too. He goes off to pray. He comes back the second time. Wouldn't you think when he caught you the first time, you'd stay awake? Hey, that's us. We're weak. Did you ever fall asleep? I heard Shelley Hamilton, Ron Hamilton's wife, say this. Ron has, Patch the Pirate, has dementia. She said he'll be on his knees. 
He'll be praying. He'll be at the bed. He'll be talking to the Lord, asking the Lord to help him, and he'll just fall asleep. She comes in, he's snoring, talking to God. Pray, pray, pray. You can't pray enough. You can't pray too much. You've got to spend time alone with God. Say, I pray when I drive. Good, but make sure you pray when you're all alone in your closet and you shut the door. You never know. Let me tell you why you ought to be prayed up. You never know when a tough time's coming. Man, I don't even like saying that. Got to be ready. Maybe. Would you just make this little trip with me? When Peter fell asleep, Jesus said, Watch and pray. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Maybe if Peter prayed those two times, the rooster would have never crowed. Possible? Possible? Not, not, that's not too far-fetched, is it? This hit Peter like that. He wasn't ready. Was he? Hey, you know this guy? He should have said, at least, look, at least one out of three. Can't you say, yeah, he's my man? Or whatever you say, yeah. What did he say? Nope. Who? Don't recall. See, prayer does something to you that you can't do to yourself. Be weak. Know who you are. Pray, pray, pray. Number four. Be careful of what you let whether it's a person or a thing. Be careful of what you let influence you. Some people, look, I'm just going to say it. I, you know what? Some people are just a drag. Hey, how you doing? Huh? Are you encouraged by that? No? Huh? Oh, well. If you're not strong enough to lift them up, they're going to pull you down. And then when you go to help to them, what are they going to say? Follow me. If Peter would have thought about where this denial would lead him, he would have done everything very differently. He said, no way, no way, excuse me, ain't no way. Well, the way came. And it took him down. Why? Because he was influenced by people that were trying to crucify our Lord rather than just getting as close to someone that could help him. The disciples should have band together and said, look, this is going to get rough. They're going to come after us. They're going to accuse us. Peter should have said, we need to stay close. Jesus said that I'll deny him if I'm not careful. Three times. The gospel, Help me not to do that. Can't we do that? Can't we call on each other to help each other? Can't you text me? Can't you call me and say, hey, I'm having a real struggle. I really need you to pray. Can't we band together? Can't we say, hey, let me tell you something. We're all going down. If it was up to the devil, we're all going down. And especially, especially when we try to do the right thing and do it loud, he's coming after us. It has been evident that he's trying. Huh? He's there. Do, do, Peter, Peter should have said, Jesus said this, I know there's a devil. Man, I, I need help. He should have ran to John. The Apostle John. Peter should have said, John, I, I'm not sure what Jesus meant. Would you help me? 
You need someone in your life. You need Jesus, but you need someone in your life who's there for you. You need someone in your life to go, see, I have to do that for all of you. You know, what if you came to church and I said, boy, what a week. Life stinks. Let's just skip church. Let's have coffee. Yeah, coffee will make me feel better. Wouldn't you, after coffee, we're just throwing up all over each other? Going, man, you, oh, man, life, it, it's crum. They said, what to you? That's terrible. What happened to you? Wow, that, oh, man, huh. We need it a little different, don't we? I'm done. The Lord made sure that he looked at Peter to remind Peter that even though Peter was denying the Lord, the Lord will never deny us. When you talk to someone, look at them. Look at them. I mean, if they're on the side of the road ask for money, don't look at them. Because I'll look at them, they'll come over to the car. Amy, Joe by, she go, there's one spot, they're always there. She said, that must be a good corner. I'm thinking, we ought to try it. I mean, I could rip up some clothes, muss my hair, grow some whiskers. I'll just put, I'm just broke. I'd like to see how much, you know. Because a lot, you don't look at those people. Because if you look at them, they make eye contact, they think you're going to give them something. When the Lord looks at you, listen to me, when you sin, He stares at you. Why? Because He'll always love you. You can't sin and make Him mad where He goes, that's it. It was a look, I think. It was a look that made Peter feel like he was the only person in the whole world. And that, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is how God treats us. That's why it's important that we do the right thing because he treats us like we're the only person in the whole world. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Heavenly Father, I want to live for you in your strength. I want to realize that I can be too strong and I need to be weak so that you can be my strength. The psalmist wrote, Psalm 27, 1, that you are the strength of our life, the strength of our heart. I need that. Lord, I need that. And Lord, I can't. Oh, help me to follow what I just said. I can't be too close to sin. Show me how to be influenced by the right things and the right people and not allow it to get so close to me because it's my choice. And you are basically telling Peter that. Here's what's going to happen. Now what are you going to do? And Lord, we know you said every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You said what's going to happen. Help us to make the right decisions to live a life where the rooster doesn't crow. God, that's for us Christians. There might be someone watching, might be someone here that isn't sure of heaven. They've never asked Jesus Christ to be their Savior. They've never asked Christ to forgive their sins and live in their life. I mean, literally come in 
and change them. If someone's watching today, Lord, would you speak to them? If they're somewhere watching this on a phone or a computer or TV, would you speak to them? So that they know it's you. And that they will ask Jesus Christ to be their Savior. As you put it, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Lord, you said just say it with your mouth, believe it in your heart, that Jesus was the only way to have our sins forgiven and washed away. And he'll save us if we ask him. If there's someone watching or here that's never done that, you help them see that. I can't. I don't want to try to be the one to convince them of that. You do that. For the rest of us who hear the rooster crow too much in our lives, help us live so the rooster won't crow. Help us live so we keep the rooster quiet. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Here's how we'll do this. God is speaking to you in some way, whether it's about heaven and salvation or whether it's about your own life and the sins in your life and how you can keep the rooster quiet. You say, preacher, God is speaking to my heart. God's speaking to my heart. And I need to do something about it. Here's my hand. I'm lifting my hand. God is speaking to my heart. God is speaking to my heart. God is speaking to my heart. Up and down. Preacher, there's a decision. Preacher, there's a decision I need to make. There's a decision I need to make. Heavenly Father, would you please, for those at home, for those here, would you just be undeniable right now? Regardless, in spite of me, just like in spite of Peter, Pentecost happened, in spite of me, work in hearts and lives, please, in Jesus' name. Would you stand, please? The, the piano's going to play. And if you want to make a decision at the altar, that's the way we do this. We feel like you can sit there and say, I need to do, no. You ought to challenge yourself by getting out of your seat and kneeling at this altar or standing in a pew, however it works for you, coming forward, it's the invitation. We invite you to make a decision. Maybe you need to say to me, hey, preacher, I'm not sure of heaven. I'd like to be sure of heaven. And I'll show you, someone will show you from the word of God what that means. But God is speaking to your heart, if that's you. God is speaking to your heart as the piano plays. Take, take these moments. And you say, God, in my life, may everything in my life that you tell me, may I do it so the rooster's quiet. Show me, Lord. She's going to play it through one more time, give you an opportunity to pray about it, think about it. Come, if you choose, come on as she plays. Join me in prayer, would you? Our Father, thank you. You know what we are. You know what we're going to do before we do it. And you warned Peter. You gave him warning. You didn't give anybody else. You said, this is going to happen. This is go you could say that, but this is going to happen. He should have jumped on that. He said, help me, Lord. So God, help us to run to you and realize how important it is. That we rely on you for our strength. That we rely on you to influence us. And to be the biggest and the first and the most important person in our life. I pray this. In Jesus' name, amen.